This video is one that was an interview that I had with someone named Bill Lampton. He's a friend of mine and he's also a fellow Steemit user. And we got a chance to talk about a lot of inside tips and tricks on what's going on, how to be successful with Steemit. We share the screen and a lot of good things that you can use to learn about how you can make money and get paid for writing content using Steemit. So join me on this video with Bill Lampton on success with Steemit. Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton. You and I both know that powerful communication skills are essential for you to succeed in your business. Communication skills help your sales, your marketing, your leadership, your customer service, and yes, your profits as well. That's why on the Biz Communication Show, the visual part, and the podcast, Every week, I host a guest, nationally and often internationally known for their communication expertise. Today, certainly our guest, Terry Brock, fits and excels in those categories. I first met Terry, Terry uh, 20 years ago. He has been a mentor, a friend, a role model, a person who has helped many people learn technology, marketing. He's an outstanding speaker and presenter who has shared his expertise in 35 countries at last count. So it's a definite pleasure for me to wear, welcome Terry Brock from Orlando, Florida. Terry, welcome to the Biz Communication Show. Bill, it is great to be back with you. Let's create some magic today. Uh, you have a way of doing that, my friend. And the magic we're going to talk about today is a new platform on social media that you introduced me to a few months ago. It's called Steemit, S-T-E-E-M-I-T. Let's start out first by defining what is Steemit? How did you get acquainted with it? What do you think its value is? Well, Steemit is a platform that is much like uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, or others that are out there in social media, but there's a big difference on it. And it got my attention when I heard some friends of mine uh, that were doing uh, broadcasts, some YouTube programs, and people that I respect talking about Steemit. And it's a place where you can go and instead of like, well, Bill, you know about this, when you write something on LinkedIn. It's very nice. You put it out there. You write something on Facebook. That's good or Twitter or whatever. But uh, Bill, when was the last time that the folks at Facebook wrote you a check because of all that post that you wrote on uh, Facebook? Uh, if, if that happened, uh, my check is still in the mail. It's still in the mail, yeah, and I wouldn't hold my breath on that one either. So, um, uh, but Steemit says, wait a minute. If you write the content, we will go ahead and pay you. And you think, whoa, that's kind of nice. Well, does it cost to get into that? No, it doesn't. Because people who believe in the platform have put in money, a seed money, they've invested in it, and they want to get even more rewards later. And so they're saying, okay, everyone starts with a bare minimum, just a little bit, a little bare minimum. And then Steemit is a place where you can create your content. You write, you produce videos, audios, pictures, other types of social media uh, interaction you put in there. And then you also get involved with the community. That's a real key so that as people know you, they like you, they trust you, they like your content, then they can click on what we call an upvote. And the upvote then gives you a certain amount of money, real money, based on your standard there, uh, the, where you are in the ranking, how much you have, what you can do. So that someone who has, say, for instance, if someone says, I really believe in this platform, and there are those who have put in thousands of dollars, then they have a much higher steam power another key term, steam power, so that that means it gets you more juice and actually more money. So I like it uh, and I think that it gives a way to really revolutionize and empower people to make money literally around the world and a way for us to learn about what's going on in different places. Well, if I'm correct from what you've talked 
taught me about this. Uh, Steemit is not designed for our iPhone or our iPad. We, we work Steemit off of our desktop computer, our laptop, right? Well, you can actually now use a mobile version. It is out there called eSteam, E is in Echo. eSteam is available on your smartphone, Android or iOS, and on your tablet. So they have done this because what they have done is they've got many, many different tools, and these tools are designed by users of Steemit. And they go out and they say, hey, there's a need here to know this, this, and this. Let's design a tool. So you get programmers writing the code for that that does all these wonderful little uh, nuances and benefits that we look at and go, gee, I sure wish it did that. Well, by golly, they sit out and write that marvelous code, and voila, there it is. Uh, of course, we know the, the limitations of some of the social media that we're more familiar with, such as the... 120 characters on um, a Twitter. What, what length articles do you post on Steemit? I have not seen a length limit. There probably is somewhere, it might be something like 500 bazillion pages. I don't know. I think that's the exact number, 500 bazillion pages. But uh, I have not seen a limit on there. And as far as how long the video can be, I would say if you can put it on YouTube, then you do it there. Actually, that's what I do. I'll often take the video that I create, I put it on YouTube, then you embed the HTML code into Steemit, and it works very well that way. And one of the things, of course, uh, you talk about the length of the, the contributions that writers give to Steemit. One of the things I've noticed, it's very much like any other kind of reading we're doing. We will read a lengthy article if it has substance, if it has relevance, if it's entertaining, if it's informative. On the other hand, if one is three paragraphs and has nothing to offer us, we probably won't read that. So length is not the determinant as much as the benefit of the content. I'd have to agree. I think it's the value to the reader. For instance, I hear there's a little thing that uh, this guy named Tolstoy wrote called War and Peace that's uh, pretty thick. You know, those old Russian novels are like this, over a thousand pages. And yet, when you really sit down and read it, there's a lot of interesting content in there for many people. And so you can read that. I think it all depends on how much value you put in there. And that goes back to the things that you and I talk about. And I know you've said it so well in your work in communication. You got to have substance. You can be the most eloquent, dynamic speaker. But if you don't have anything really worthwhile to say, people are going to pretty soon click you off. Another thing that I'd like to get back to here is we've talked about so far videos and pictures and text. Just text alone will not keep an audience these days, will it? It usually doesn't. I like to use that word usually. I'm, I've found more, I guess as I get older, I hate to use words like never or always or only this way, you know, because then all you got to do is find one little bitty example that's different and you've destroyed the never or always. But I think text alone often can be, here's that terrible word in communication, Bill, boring. And we want to stay away from boring you know, uh, and avoid that, avoid cliches, avoid cliches like the plague. I mean, that's what we've got to do, you know, because otherwise we're going to be in problem. But I think if you enhance it with some carefully chosen, appropriate videos or pictures that support that, that will be good. And matter of fact, here's one thing I've noticed recently within the last year that has come on even stronger, and that is using the GIF files, G-I-F, which is pronounced GIF, and it gives you the ability, you've got a moving picture. You've probably seen those, Bill. You know, they're moving real fast, and it repeats over and over. It's like maybe a three to five second, usually. They can be longer as well. But I find that kind of motion in something that's quick gets attention and is used often uh, to really enhance the text. Fact is, you introduced me to G-I-F. <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> I use them in Steemit. I've used them on Twitter. I've used them on Facebook. And it, in a way, goes back to why cartoons were so popular when we were kids. There was action. It was 
colorful. Uh, gifts are nearly always amusing, and yet they, they help get a point across. And we need to remember, Terry, many people who are on all the social media, and particularly Steemant, these are people who might have been the MTV video age. And so just looking at still pictures, just reading a text, or even just seeing some slight motion does not grab them enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it has to be contextually uh, significant. It has to be something that we understand our particular group and what is it that the people we're talking to really want. Once we can lock into that, then we'll be successful and realize it keeps changing. What people like today will be different 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and we have to keep adapting and adjusting and not long for the good old days, which is too easy to do whenever we determine the good old days were. Because I found, Bill, as you and I look at the history, I don't care what era. You give me a block of time and say, these were the good old days. Really? I could find a whole lot that went wrong then, too. So I think we just keep adapting and adjusting and realize, okay, let's make it as appropriate and appealing as possible and compelling for people to consume the content that we have. You know, my eight-track tapes are not selling very well these days, Terry. You know, I told you, you got to get, well, I'm thinking you go back to the crank-up phonograph. You know, <laughs> Edison, I'm thinking those kind would be really good. They're, they might have a comeback someday. The <laughs> cylinders that they had, you know, maybe it'll come back. We've talked about so far, and it's very important, it's central to communication, the power of seeing something. Before we started recording, you said that you could share with us a sample of what Steemit looks like, uh, your, your page, your segment, whatever we want to call it on Steemit. Could you do that? Sure. Matter of fact, we're using a tool here called Zoom, and it gives the ability, like many other tools, to share the screen. So what I'm going to do is do that right now. And Bill, you should see my page here on Steemit right now, live and direct. Is that coming through for you? Very clearly. Yeah, so you see it's got information here on me. I've enhanced mine a little bit with some extra programs. So it shows me some rankings of reputation here, and it shows some uh, numbers, et cetera, that are important, followers, et cetera. And then here are some of the actual programs uh, that I've produced, uh, the information I put out here and what is available so that people can see what's going on. And this way, uh, people uh, can understand what's happening. Like, for instance, here's one. I was in the studio. I think I was sharing this with you offline a while back with Jesse Ventura and Dr. Ron Paul. And I was one of two, three other people in the studio with them. And I just was right next to the camera. I thought, I've got an opportunity here. And it was perfectly legal, just fine with them because I was chaperoning Ron Paul around at an event. And so I just pulled out the camera and shot it. Well, here's what I did. And I put that picture in first, some text, and then you can go watch it on DTube, which is a competitor of YouTube. And this gives people the ability to see what's going on. So they can see this here and be able to get a lot of information in many different ways. Here's another one example, uh, interviewing some people that I did uh, just recently. Here's a picture of the screen. And then here is uh, uh, some other, some GIFs. That matter of fact, I'm going to hold it right here for just a moment. You can see that GIF that is playing right there. Notice that it's changing back and forth. That is, there's no sound coming from it. But because it's changing, it tends to gravitate your eyes toward it. And you think, oh, okay, I want to see what that's all about. Well, then I'm going to slide down here, and there's that familiar play button that we can press and, of course, hear the video. So using this with uh, uh, Steemit gives us the ability to communicate with a lot of people, to be very creative, and, like we said, get paid for it. Sometimes not as much. It takes a while to build that up. I found that it takes uh, usually six months to a year or even longer to really get it moving. Steemit has only been around for a little over a year, so it's still in its growth stage and still moving forward at this point. Looking at uh, your page there, certainly I noticed 1,231 followers on Steemit. Do we attract and keep followers on Steemit? Steam it basically the same way we do on other platforms, that is by giving them something useful. They keep coming back to us. They want to follow us because they, they get benefits. 
Yeah, and I think it's much like you get uh, a following on LinkedIn or Facebook. You've got to provide value. And that value is determined not by what I think is nifty and groovy, but it's by what people want. And I like the little extra edge that it gives with Steam It. Because it's one thing for people to give you a like on Facebook. That's nice. They give you a like and a thumbs up there on LinkedIn. Okay, we feel good about that. But on Steam It, they actually can upvote you and money goes to you and there's a limit. You cannot just continually upvote everyone there. If you upvoted one, you can adjust from uh, one to 100% upvote. And depending on how much money you have in your account with your steam power, you can give more. But if you give 100% upvote to someone, that means you only have four left. And so after those four, you then have no steam power and it takes another five days for it to rejuvenate. The first day you'd have only 20%, second day 40%, etc. So I like that because what it does is it makes it a little more real. You don't just upvote willy-nilly. But what you do is you say, okay, I got to provide really good quality. And is this post really worth a 100% upvote? Or is it worth only uh, maybe a 20% or a 10%? And realize if you give everybody, you know, a 50% or a 100%, you quickly run out of your allocated Steam power. So I like the way Steam it does it. Puts a little more real world emphasis on it. Terry, very relevant to what we've been talking about. You said to me that you produce four or five videos per week. What I think you and I both would like to encourage people to do, not just for steaming, but for all of their marketing purposes, and this of course is your major bailiwick, is to learn video production. There was a time when getting a video produced might cost a month of your time and thousands of dollars. You're paying somebody else while you're going through the process, and you learn several years ago, and I was fortunate to learn from you and Mike Stewart and others that even a non-techie <laughs> like the biz communication guy can learn video production. That wasn't our intended topic today, but we've talked about video so much. I'm sure you would encourage people, just find somebody who can walk you through the steps and surprisingly in an afternoon you could learn how to do that yeah it's wonderful that we're alive today and we see the technology better than ever I mean for instance Bill look at what we're doing right now we're using zoom and with a click of a button like right now they can see on the video that I'm doing I'm in what's called gallery view so they're seeing you and me I'm gonna click up here I'm gonna go into kind of inside uh, politics here inside baseball when I click on a thing called speaker view now it has my video on there on the video that I'm capturing only me seen there and that's kind of nice also in a way when you think about it Bill this is like having your own television production studio right here for a minimal cost you can actually get zoom in a free version and then they have higher versions that do a little bit more but I step back and just have to go wow this is amazing and I have to agree with you once again Bill people using video is powerful and I would encourage those of you that are watching this Think about how you can do it also. You've got a message. Whether you're a speaker like Bill and I am or writers, or you might say, well, I've just got a little uh, store here. we got a hardware store and we're running it. Well, a video would be very good because you could pick up various objects. Go, look what came into the store today. We've got these right now and they're on sale today, et cetera, et cetera. It gives you an enormous opportunity to connect with people. And also like Bill is doing right now, and he does it very well, doing interviews connecting with people around the world. If they have access to the net and they can get the free version of Zoom, they're going to be able to be on your program. So, Bill, it's a great – Bill, you picked a really good time to be born because we got all this today. Uh, I, I can thank my parents. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, one quick item before we ask you for your contact information. I'm sure some people are saying, okay, how do I find Steemit? How do I get on it? Is it just steemit.com? Yep, that's it. It's S-T-E-E-M-I-T. -E -E Notice it's spelled a little differently than Steam. So Steemit with two E's, it.com. You apply. 
they evaluate you, and uh, after 24 to 48 hours, then you usually are accepted. And then you start with 25 uh, STEAM dollars that you have, and you can use those within the STEAM environment because people have said, hey, I believe in this format so much, I'm giving a lot, and so they just have it set up that way that you would get so much money, and then you want to start building contacts, start uh, watching what others are doing, replying on comments, getting to know people. That's the first step. Then later on, creating your own content, putting it there, putting in videos, and finding out what works and what doesn't. I find it a wonderful study in how to produce content. I find it a wonderful way then to connect with people and to really build a good community that's worldwide. Terry, long ago, uh, <laughs> a comedian named George Goebel used to end his program by looking up and saying, well, the old clock on the wall. <laughs> and, uh, the old clock on the wall has told me that, unfortunately, we're going to end this. However, the good news is I know we will be on the Biz Communication Show hosting Terry Brock again. With all the valuable information you have, with the enriching services that you offer, people want your contact information. So give that to us, please, Terry. Well, it's real simple to find me. I've got uh, social media presence in Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all that. And the details for that are over at my website. That's probably the best place to go. And the website is, appropriately enough, terrybrock.com. And that's spelled T E R R Y. And Brock is spelled the right way, B-R-O-C-K. So terrybrock.com, and they can get all the information. And on Steemit, it's at Terry Brock, one word, all lowercase, of course. But I look forward to hearing from you. Let me know you heard it here on Bill Lampton's Biz Communication Show, and I'll look forward to uh, staying in touch with you. Uh, and if you're searching for Terry on Google, don't get confused. He's not that, what is it, a drummer or a rock musician, Terry Brock? Yeah, rock musician Terry Brock. He was a former uh, singer with a group called Kansas. Oh Carry on, our wayward son. Kind of, yeah, he was with that group. Oh, my goodness. Terry, since you've given your contact information, I'm delighted to give mine as well. For those who have been viewing our program or listening on podcasts, the biz communication guy, which means logically that my website is bizcommunicationguy.com invite you to visit my website, sign up for my newsletter, and also see the services that I offer for your company and for business leaders as well. Terry Brock, thank you again so much for being with us. Thanks to all of you who have watched and listened. And Terry Brock, as we sign off, I want to give you one more opportunity to say goodbye to our group. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And Bill, thank you very much for having me on. Always great to be with you. Thanks, and be with us again next week for another informative and entertaining version of the Biz Communication Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton.